know what? Good morning, good afternoon. Hey, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Padija. I, I, I want to share this article with y'all because, um, you know, it kind of got to me. Actually, first of all, I didn't know that um, Janice Joplin was from Port Arthur, Texas. Um, and I'm sure Port Arthur was a little bit different then than it is now. But uh, And also Jimmy Johnson from the Dallas Cowboys was also from Port Arthur, Texas. I just didn't know that. A lot of y'all probably did. But uh, let me share this article with y'all from the Daily Mail. It's, uh, it's an exclusive. Janis Joplin was bullied in high school by future Dallas Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson, who threw pennies at her, claimed she was an easy lay, and nicknamed her Beat Weeds in reference to her pubic hair. Janis Joplin was bullied by Jimmy Johnson during their high school days in the late 50s in Port Arthur, Texas, a new book obtained by Daily Mail claims. Johnson nicknamed Joplin Beat Weeds partly because she had she was a beatnik and partly because weeds in jock vernacular was referred to her pubic hair. Johnson, 76, would go on to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys and now works as a football analyst at Fox Sports. Joplin, who died at the age of 27 in 1970 from a heroin overdose, endured merciless bullying from Johnson and his jock friends because she dressed like a beatnik. They spread rumors that she had slept with their friends because she looked and acted weird, writes Holly George Warren in Janice, Her Life and Music. His crew also tried to grope Joplin, who hit the boys hands away, but they would later lie and claim that she was an easy lick. Janice Joplin was merciless bullied by the head coach of the Dallas football um, former head coach of the Dallas football player Jimmy Johnson Johnson sat in front of a culture icon and made her life miserable because she hated sports and dressed like a beatnik Johnson who is now an analyst for sports after leading the Cowboys to a Super Bowl victory in, in 92 and 93 Nicknamed Joplin Beatweeds. Damn, damn, damn. All this is from her book. Uh, a book that's out actually now. Called Janice, Her Life in Music. By Holly George Warren. The unlikely meeting of Joplin, who went on to become world famous folk and blues singer before Faley overdosing on heroin, heroin at age 27, happened in Port Arthur, Texas, where she and Johnson grew up. They both attended Thomas Jefferson High School, where in the late 1950s, conformity was the norm. But by Janice's senior year, she had become an image of everything the students disliked. Her friend Tari Owens told George Warren, Johnson was a grade behind Joplin and was the polar opposite of her. He was the son of a dairy worker and had already lost his front teeth as the star linebacker on the school team, the Yellow Jackets. Joplin, by contrast, was already harboring dreams of escaping Port Arthur and was considered and was considering being a singer or a painter. In his own memoir, Jack Johnson said that he singled out Joplin because she ran with a beatnik crowd. He wrote. Her crowd was, to say the least, anti-jock. Our crowd was made up of jocks and cheerleaders and majorettes who hung out with us and wore our leather jackets. But it was true to an extent. Joplin was a rebellious teen who had grown up to despise teen sports and abhorred football, which was sacred in Texas at the time. Johnson wrote, Janice looked and acted so weird that when we were around her, mostly in the hallways, we would give her a hard time. Johnson wrote, uh, we gave her the nickname Beat Weeds, partly because she was a beatnik, 
partly because weeds in jock vernacular referred to her pubic hairs. Johnson said that it could have easily been a beat bush as a cruel alternative. That wasn't the only insult Joppa endured. Other Jops called her uh, white and threw pennies at her. Mm -mm -mm. Called her white. That's what they all were, weren't they? Um, I'm sorry. That wasn't the only insult. Other Jops would call her white whore and threw pennies at her. When Joplin hit the boy's hands away, they would later lie and claim she was an easy lay. Wow. <laughs> looking at this guy. I'm looking at them both. Anyway, but at the time, it was far from the truth. When Joplin did date somebody, she would later become polynamorous and date men and women. They would try to get her drunk and push her into sex, which she refused. Joplin's response to the insults was to laugh and swear at them, which sometimes landed her in the principal's office. Johnson and the others on the football team were unpunished, and Johnson is still utterly unrepentant about it. Decades later, telling Sports Illustrated that Beatweeds never wore any panties, but it wasn't clear how he came to that conclusion. Joplin's best friend, Patty Scaff, um, said, People said she was loose, and she did this or that. Ten times as many as guys as she would had, she had ever gone out, out with said they had slept with her. After high school, Joplin moved to Austin, where she studied at the University of Texas, but her run-ins with the football team continued. Damn. The cruel campus joke, was the thing that finally broke her and sent her on an anti-establishment path for the rest of her life, said George Warren Wright. That's what George, George, George Warren writes. Blah, blah, blah. Each year, the Alpha Phi Omega fraternity sponsor its annual fundraiser by holding the ugliest man on camp campus contest. Students voted for each candidate nominated by various fraternities for $5 each. Normally, the hulking linebacker would be the winner, but in 1962, somebody chose anonymously, and they entered Janis Joplin. Mm -mm -mm. Her picture was put on posters all over the campus, and though she laughed it off inside, she was devastated. Paul St. John said she had already been profoundly hurt over and over and over. The contest crushed her. The saddest thing that you ever saw. I had never seen Janice cry. Janice had a very tough exterior, but it really got to her. Got to her real bad. Joplin then moved to San Francisco, and five years later, she sang on at the Monterey Pop Festival with Big Brother and the Holding Company, and it was capitalizing to stardom, and that would, would come to a tragic end in 1970. She played Woodstock and was contemporary with Bob Dylan, Joan Baez as part of the 1960 generation that rocked the establishment. Joplin was posthumously admitted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Her celebrity assured after her death at such a tragically young age. Wow. Um, that's interesting. What y'all think about that? First of all, did you know she was from Port Arthur, though, for those of y'all who know her, which is really, really a poor town in Texas right now. But, you know, barring the other stuff, what y'all think about Jimmy Johnson being a, such a bully and still, still being unrepentant today that he did that and showing no remorse? Because, you know, I, I can relate to that. I can relate to that high school experience to some degree. Um, to be uh, bullied or to be... Um, shamed um, and that's not a good feeling and I want to know if anybody else has experienced anything like this Janet job that's probably what sent her off the edge sometimes when you on the outskirts and people already single you out for being different um, that's where the battle begins and um, 
I just want to say rest in peace, Janice. You know, and this, I don't like to hear about anybody being bullied and anybody being made to feel uncomfortable by the way they dress, by the way they sound, by the way they talk. You know, any of those things to me is just weakness. So with that being said, um, y'all tell me what you think about Janice Joplin at Thomas Jefferson High School, her and Jimmy Johnson, the bully. Wow. All right, see you in the next video.